well. Get ready, get ready. Putting leftover pizza in a bag like a pro, like a boss. In today's video, mm -hmm, you read it right, guess what we do are doing? We are home canning meat, ground beef to be exact. Am I an expert? No way. Do I know what I'm doing? Of course not. I am on a journey, I'm sharing it with you, so we'll figure this out together. I shared a picture of myself with my little ball hook on Instagram and shared how I was gonna get started canning meat today and I have all kinds of good questions from there as well. So I'm gonna be rolling through those. Today you're also gonna see I have several new pressure canners. I have a water bath canner, two of those Presto canners, and then an All-American canner. I only learned about the All-American All canner from, uh, from you guys. And since I am uh, in new life, new homestead, new goals, I am all about the canning that I haven't done in years. I have made the investment into getting stuff to get set up. I've talked to several ladies who have two or three of the All-American canners and they have outside gas uh, propane setups where they do their canning. I did get one of those outside setups as well. I ordered on walmart.com, it was like $98. And I thought, if I'm doing lots of canning this summer, I want to be. I listened to my friend Shannon from Seeds for Generations. Shan Shannon led me this way. So the link to her uh, Seeds for Generation will be in the description below as well. So anywho, I'm going to get a lot of this going today. This is my first of what will probably be 100 canning videos. Eventually we'll have a playlist. We'll just be rocking at canning all the things. But like I say, we must start somewhere. If you are experienced at canning meat, uh, watch this video, give us your tips, give us your links, give us all kinds of info down in those comments. I would love to hear from you. And I know lots of other ladies will be reading those comments too. Now, whenever I start something new, I feel like, okay, no one really wants to hear about this. Uh, this is stupid, this is something everybody knows, those kind of things. But then whenever I shared the picture on Instagram, the comments were like, wow, Jay Morell, I just ordered my first pressure canner too. I don't know where to get started, or I've been canning pickles and fruits and other things, but I've never done meat. Um, Jay Morell, please do a video of this and share with us what you're doing and how you're getting started. So. I'm going to be reading <laughs> the directions for you. Honestly, this afternoon, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna can this all this ground beef myself and not even do a video. Believe it or not, I do things like that. Uh, but then with all those comments, I thought, oh, I think some people wanna see this, so there you go. So step one, <laughs> I have to finish unloading my dishwasher. I have, this camera is sitting on top of. Um, I brought up from my basement, I've been slowly adding to my canning jar collection. Now I do have jars, but they're older, older now. And so I've been getting cases of new canning jars as I've seen them. I'm going to can, let, let me tell you, let me tell you what we're canning. I'm gonna can, it's 30 pounds of ground beef, cooked, mostly cooked ground beef. We'll get into that. Uh, it's on the stove now, so I will show that to you. I'm gonna be using quart jars. I have quart, I have pint, I have half pint. I also have several half gallon jars. I think I got 12 or so of those, but I'm saving those for the goat milk that we're gonna start. Just again, all the things, all the things, right? I have several ball books, ball cooking books. Um, I have the canning books that I bought almost 10 years ago where I had a couple summers where I did can and it wasn't even like a huge amount of canning. I did a lot of pickles, a lot of blueberries, peaches, applesauce. I mean, I've, I've had a hand in it, but it's been a while. So mm -hmm, we're, we're getting going. So I know I have those books, but me and unpacking, we have not been unpacking. So, it's on the list, and you know how my list goes. I'll have something on a list, and like two to three weeks later, you know, we'll, we'll get it done. We'll get there, right, Zion? We always get there. Wow. Tell them, tell them we always yes. get there. I don't we know always where we're going, but. <laughs> he doesn't know where we're going, but we always get there. Tell them, tell them, Zion. Tell my friends. That's, that's... I don't usually drive us off a cliff 
But, uh, and when I'm trying to do things, we'll get them done, but it's gonna take me a little bit. So my old canning books are not unpacked yet. That, mm-hmm, big project. I picked up a fresh book to read me through the process so I can get other things unpacked. If I end up with an extra canning book, I'm sure I have a local mama I could pass it on to. So let me show you what we got here. So these are the three boxes of canning jars. I think, let's see, this definitely looks like the wide mouth jars. Um, these look like regular mouth. You can see here, we got quart, they have pint, half pint, then jelly jars. I've got some of those half gallon, yep, good for all kinds of things. So these definitely look like wide mouth to be regular, and these look like regular. And as far as I know, the sizes in the mouth, yeah, that says regular mouth. Uh, it's just the convenience of getting getting things in and out of them, okay. So, there's a lot of talk about sterilizing your jars. I watched a video today on intro to canning. I'm gonna to totally butcher the farm's name, but I will link it. She's got over an hour intro to canning video. Very good. She was talking about when she gets a new case of jars, she puts them through the dishwasher, on the sanitize mode, and she uses them from there. So anyway, she, she told me to do it, so I'm doing it, let's go. Also heard or read somewhere, I've been taking in a lot of canning, consuming a lot of canning content, that it's usually one pound of meat per one quart jar. So since I have 30 pounds of meat, that would be 30 jars. I've got 36 of these jars, but I do plan to do other canning this week as well. Besides freezing all the things, I'm gonna also be canning all the things. So we will just be six jars ahead. So I'm putting all my lids either in my utensil holder or up here in the top rack. Here's how things are uh, looking. So we can even have a lesson on, this was on the bottom, the bottom. I was looking at this box because it has a soup recipe there, yay. Flipped it over, we can just have a lesson on the bottom of this canning box. So this is both kinds of canners that I have. So doing my little commercial for ball, it says canning recipes, freshpreserving.com, blue book guide to preserving or any of the other ball canning cookbooks. Yay, um, so water bath canning, this is for high acid foods, so I picked up one of those water bath canners. Tomatoes, pickles, salsa, jelly, pie filly, jam, fruit, chutney. There we go, we'll need a jar lifter, a bubble remover, and a funnel. Now, I don't have a bubble remover, so I'm still gonna make a go of it, though. I have everything else. It says, you will also need a ball 21 quart water bath canner and a ball utensil set for preserving. Okay, that's what's in there. So I've got the jar lifter in the funnel. I didn't know what the bubble remover was for. Okay, so then pressure canning for low acid foods. We got green beans, carrots, beets, meat, fish, poultry, and that is what this canner is for. Hmm, good info. Okay, so yeah, if you want to screenshot it, <laughs> but I know info's all over. There you go. I was just happy to turn it over and see this. Real cool. And then this box has a recipe for apple pie filling. Yay, when the orchards get rolling. Not as exciting as the other two, ball canning, but still good information. And this is the book that, I know my dishwasher's gonna be loud now, but this is the book that I'm gonna use. I think this was $11 at my hardware store where I bought my canning jars. So someone told me that this book already is back ordered or wait list or something on Amazon. Maybe you can get it used. Um, but in here, let me flip to the meats, yes. So, so class, page 97, <laughs> meats, seafoods, and vegetables. And so for the chopped meat, beef, lamb, mutton, pork, veal, and venison, this is the directions on page 98 that I'm following. And then over here, I've got my meat cooking. So you know me, only mega and lots. I've got 20 pounds of ground beef in this. This is a 22 quart stock pot. Someone else was asking me about like large family cookware the other day. So look for the link in the description. I've got a link to all my favorite cooking supplies and utensils and pots and pans. I have never found like one set that has it all. I've had to hunt and peck. This pot is around $70, but Walmart usually carries it. It's about the same price on Amazon. So 
Just felt like answering that lady again in this video. You're welcome. 20 pounds in there, 10 pounds in here. So since my meat was frozen, I'm going ahead and cooking it up first. Now, I'll actually cook up more during the pressure canning process. One video that is linked below, the same lady that did the intro to canning, wonderful video, has a canning meat video. She was saying that she gets her meat done. It can even still be a little pink because it'll cook up more in the pressure canner. So we obviously have a lot going on with the meat cooking and then these 36 jars sanitizing themselves so it will be nighttime it will be bedtime by the time we get this done with all the little steps going on not that this takes so much time I mean I could totally go out with my kids or do other things right now but it's my filming afternoon so I'm filming lots of videos but I want to show you I want to do an unboxing now of the new pressure canners that I got let's have a look at them and I will be using both the Presto pressure canner and my new all-american pressure canner and we can just test them out and give them both a try so these Presto pressure canners I guess I should look up my phone before I say it. I want to say they were like $89 or so on Amazon, almost twice as much locally in March. It was, why is it saying $76? I guess it was $76.30, ended up being $80.37 with tax, etc. Then whenever I saw this same pressure canner at my local hardware store, I just remember feeling like, ooh, I'm so glad that I got this for a deal. And that's why I then went and ordered a second one because I figured I have almost paid locally for one but I got two out of it. <laughs> Somehow that was my rationale. And then I also know, talking to a lot of my friends who do a lot, like huge gardens, canned meat, canned chicken, canned deer, you know, everything, uh, they don't just use one canner. Obviously, if you don't have a canner, start with one canner. The reason I have gone from zero to three is I know like even when I'm canning this meat I'm gonna have two canners going on my stove and so as I'm canning a lot I'm gonna need to move things in and amongst different canners I plan on this summer to do the whole backyard vision of having the gas set up and having multiple canners going outside too when it's real hot so anyway let's open this box finally you can have a, a real unboxing now this brand of canner is not available amazon should show you several others the electric pressure cookers such as my go wise and the instant pot those are not tested or made for canning this is a pressure canner and cooker so you just have to make sure that that's what you get our lid yeah and then be careful there's your gauges and knob things we don't want to accidentally throw out so in here is a whole warning whole little warning page about using outside heat sources which is exactly what i ordered that other thing for so we'll see it says do not use pressure canner on outdoor lp gas burner or gas ranges over 12,000 btus such as a turkey fryer these types of heat sources will soften the canner, causing the bottom to warp. They may also result in property damage. Oh, well, I don't know that that's what I necessarily ordered. I'll, I'll figure that out. Okay, just showing you what's in there. Oh yeah, so see, even we talk, we talk about uh, reading different things, reading different resources. We've got everything. Everything in this one book, pressure canning, how to pressure can foods. Helpful hints for canning, care and ma maintenance, canning fruit, tomatoes, vegetables, meat, poultry, fish, soups. How to can foods using boiling water method, which that depends on the acidity there. How to pressure cook foods in your pressure canner. Poultry, entrees, dried beans, peas, soups, desserts. All kinds of good information there in that book. And then here is the rack. Here is the canner, which the, the box didn't look too big, but it's pretty good. Yeah, 23 quarts. I mean, my biggest stock pot is 22 quarts. So the next step, we have this beast. This is a 25 quart all American canner. This is the one that just so many of you all who, who know things have told me, Jay Morrell, go this way. Oh my goodness, look at, I'm sorry, distracted. Is that sunset even coming through this? I don't know if it is. 
It's absolutely beautiful though. There you go, might be seeing it. Okay, focus, Jamro. <laughs> okay, now my lighting must adjust. Uh, Noreen from Noreen's Kitchen told me to look into all American canners. Also, uh, girlfriend over on Needy Homesteader. When I see her canning stuff, she's always got like two of these going. Many of you, again, in comments have told me to give this one a go. So that's what we're doing. Yes, let's open it up. And now you can order these directly from All American Canner. I mean, I still ordered it directly from the company. I just used Amazon. This is the 925 pressure canner. Now there might have been a particular All American Canner. It was one video I was watching today. She was given the numbers of her All American Canner and I was like, oh, I didn't think anything about particular numbers. I was going on sizes. I knew, um, my other two, they're looking at me, were 23 quarts, so I thought I would go with a 25 quart. Okay, so we have our regulator. This, there you go. Look at all those options. Packed and checked. Save this slip for reference in event of a problem. Two racks. So this one's heavy duty. This one was, I wanna say it was $250 or so. Very, very expensive. But I am making long-term investments next summer when I'm canning, besides, you know, if I want to treat myself to some new jars or what have you, I don't need, I won't need to buy these pricier items. I'll have what I need. Oh, very heavy duty lid. I'm gonna feel professional with that. Okay, yes, it's a beast. It's a beast, it's a beast. Oh. Very heavy duty, for real, for real. Lid girlfriend whose video is linked below, don't know her name, is talking about the weight. Okay, before opening, remove. We can read, we can do things, we'll figure it out. Don't worry about me, I know some people are scared, I know you're scared. Okay, instructions and recipes, we like those. Part numbers, names, directions, full diagram. I have a feeling I'm gonna make myself a cup of tea and read my new pressure canner books while my jars finish sterilizing. How to prevent botulism. I know that's, uh, I need to sit here with my Instagram questions. Maybe I'll do that. Let, let's have a seat here. Angela asked, are you going to show how to can tomatoes and beans? Because that's really what I want to learn how to do, please. And I said, yes, I'm gonna show the journey of canning all the things, so, so buckle up, uh-huh. Kylie asked me, she said, are you going to can those potatoes? I've seen canned potatoes at the store, but I'm scared. And I said, I have to grow all the potatoes first, but then yes, we will be canning all the potatoes. And this is a question I have a couple different ways, and I'm sure it will have it in the comments here too, which is fine, throw it at me, it's good. Miss Vicky 3 said, no disrespect intended, but why can ground beef when you already have it preserved in the freezer? What I said to her was no disrespect taken. I have 50 meat birds coming that I will be raising and processing later in June. I need more room in my freezers. I'm also going to can, give to others, and freeze those birds as well. And the only way I can learn a new skill is to actually do it, so that's true. Again, I was just thinking I was just gonna do this some on my own and not even film it, but then I have, you know, JMRL, please show us how, type comments over and over again. I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna, I will share the journey. We do have 50 meat birds coming. They will actually be here by the end of this week as well. I've got the brooders and everything set up for them. I'm going to be raising them inside, brooding them for about three weeks, which brooding just means they're gonna be under the heat lamp, they're gonna be all snuggled, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna be okay like, like some little baby chicks. This breed though, it's the Cornish Cross. They grow very fast, very, very fast. So by three weeks, it's common to turn them out to pasture. We have our zip tie dome that we will be building, our version of a chicken tractor, and they will be pasture raised chickens in that zip tie dome. We will move them around to fresh grass and such until about eight weeks. I've talked to some ladies who actually let theirs get to up to 13 weeks before they process them. I will feel that out at the time, but my good friend Chelsea, Chelsea processes her birds at eight weeks and I do what Chelsea tells me to do, okay, okay? <laughs> so uh, I'm planning to process at eight weeks. All that to say, 50 processed, packaged, large, I mean, these are like six pounds or so, even once you're done processing them, hens take up a lot of room. I think when I bought 12, was it 12 or 20? Hmm. 
Okay, I think now actually it must have been, I got 20 pasture raised chickens from our local farm called JNL Green Farm. Little plug for them. They ship all over the US. So if you want pasture raised pork or beef or chicken or whatever, JNL Green Farm, that's where we go locally. And I've mentioned them before in videos and I think someone from Alabama ordered uh, a whole cow or half a cow from them. I ordered 20 from them and those chickens took up two of my shelves in my freezers. And so I'm just thinking with 50, it's a whole lot of chickens. I want that much because I wanna be able to bless a couple other families that we know. I also want to freeze many of those birds and I want to pressure can a bunch of that chicken as well. So me doing this ground beef, I'm helping get some room in my freezers and I'm practicing these skills. I will be canning ahead a lot. Basically anything I can can. You know I freeze a lot, but I'm also gonna start canning a lot. You know, I feel like I'm the queen of uh, uh, even using things from the freezer when I forget to set them out in time to thaw, I can still make it work with that. I just, I have a vision. We have this other room off of our basement that just has furniture and other things we need to finish unpacking in it. But when we get these shelves Travis is working on, you might have seen those in some videos. When we get it set up, it's going to be a wonderful food preservation room. And I want all the things canned in there and i also want all the things in my freezer i just want what i need to care for my family and of course help others and i think that canning is definitely a new life skill i can i can improve on someone else is saying you may already know her but linda her youtube channel is linda's pantry she is an experienced canner and she uses the all-american pressure canner this lady is sharing they're about 250 dollars but they're well worth it so i will have a link for linda's pantry below as well another instagram follower says i want to start canning but i'm terrified i'll kill us so i understand there are risks with canning i mean botulism is deadly it's a real thing uh, but i feel like there's risk with everything there's risk with frozen food. There's risk with food you buy at the grocery store. I mean, wasn't it just yesterday we were all terrified of the romaine lettuce? So there's risk with it all. But I feel like there's lots of good information. There's products. Uh, there's the ball book. There's also the National Center for Home Food Preservation. So they have a site with just tons and tons of resources. So you are gonna look down in the description of this video and go down the rabbit trail of all the canning resources. Someone else is telling me she likes to can London broil, comes out great. Some like the texture of canned ground beef, some don't. Would probably be okay in a sauce. That's what I'm thinking. The spaghetti sauce, hamburger soup, tacos with some pinto beans. I mean, really I feel like besides hamburger patties and meatloaf, I mean, shepherd's pie, there's a whole lot I could use canned ground beef for. So to make this a little easier, I'm combining the 10 pounds with the 20 pounds of ground beef now that everything's cooked down. So I'm just working out of one pot. So there's this big pot with 30 pounds of ground beef. Also just got out my canning salt. From what I was reading, you'll want to use canning salt because regular salt turns cloudy. So just, just a little something there for you. I'm sure there's a bazillion additional reasons as well, but that's what I'll be using. It says here, uh, half a teaspoon of salt for a pint jar, one teaspoon of salt for the quart jar. And now I don't remember which which I heard, I mean, we're just gonna fill it and however much it is. It might be that you can fit a pound of meat in a pint or maybe it was the quart. I forget what I heard, what I heard tale of. So we, we will test it out. And I Googled it and Google was not helpful. So it doesn't really matter. I just, well, I'd like to know how many pounds are in each jar that we're saving. And now I've, I'm reading through my uh, Presto pressure canner. This was the least intimidating of, uh, the two brands of the three new ones that I got. Anyway, so I figure it's a good place to start pressure canning meat. I've been reading in here. Then it says about the salt, it says meats may be processed with or without salt. If salt is desired, use only canning salt. Table salt contains a filler which may cl cause cloudiness in the bottom of the jar. Use a half teaspoon of salt for each pint, one teaspoon for each quart. 
More or less salt may be added to suit individual taste. Okay, things are happening here. Not filming too much because I'm getting my <laughs> getting my rhythm and reading all my directions again and again. First one, going in. Okay, so now by my seventh can, <laughs> I feel like I can hold my camera and do this. I was reading with the Presto canner, it can do seven one quart jars. So seven of those these larger size jars at one time. And you need a one inch head space. So this is not something I can do my mega and lots. Oh, let's just push it to the limit, JMRL. It needs to be loosely packed and have some broth. And I don't have that one little measurer like I've seen in the books, but I'm, I'm eyeballing an inch head space here. Just to look for any air bubbles, I think we're good. The hardest time I've been having is getting the salt. To, oh, see, now maybe it's gonna listen. And you can can even without using the salt. It's just totally up to you per what the books say. After we are done with our canning and cooling full process, we will label and date these lids just like they were our freezer bags. Okay, so here's how things are looking. Here's our last jar. Now it had said in the directions to go ahead and to put three quarts of hot water in here, which is what I have. And there's our jars. Yay, next step. I'm here doing my reading. I've been reading through this whole book. So right now I've got it sealed. We are going to exhaust air from the canner for 10 minutes by allowing steam to flow from the vent pipe. There's no steam coming from there yet but it's gonna happen. So our processing time hasn't officially started yet. We have to vent it, and then we have to work with getting the pressure right. Once we get the right pressure, then we will set our timer. And I believe, let's see here, go back to our little meat directions. It's gonna need 90, it says 11 pounds of pressure, quartz 90 minutes. Right there for ground meat. Process at 11 pounds of pressure. Pints, 75 minutes, quarts, 90 minutes, and then there's different directions for different altitudes. Still waiting on that canner to start releasing steam for us to let us do that for 10 minutes. Getting my next canner going. I'm already seeing it's gonna be so great when we get that extra stove we got off of Facebook Marketplace hooked up in the garage. Now that the garage is clean and organized, that's coming up. Travis says he's gotta put a different plug-in for that, or he already did, or something. Something's happening. Anyway, I can still fit two canners on my stove, so yay. This has my ground beef in it, though. That's my canner, so I've got to kind of do a little, little dance here to get this done. Now, I was reading because I don't have that handy-dandy tool that measures the proper one-inch head space. Sorry, my bananas here definitely are in the way. Lots of banana bread coming, as I said. Also has an air bubble popper tool. So I was reading about ways to make sure you have all your air bubbles out without um, having that. And the biggest one was to push what you can to the side. We're finally to the point with this other canner where I can feel steam coming out of there. I just set my watch timer it's supposed to do that for 10 minutes. Then there's some more steps, but that's that's on watch now, on 10 minute watch. None of this counts yet towards the time for the jars. So the biggest thing I wanna know from you ladies in the comments is how to fight this box of salt. I want to just, I think in the past, I just like ripped the tops off of it. <laughs> That may be what I end up doing. It's been 10 minutes now, time to read the next step in our book. And I drained the ground beef and added water back in to make more of a broth, by the way. You can use uh, broth, water, or tomato juice per these directions here. They say that tomato juice is best for wild game. As you'll read in the Presto Canner Guidebook, there's a little V there. There's one way to turn it for close, another way for open. Turn this heat up. We're going to begin this whole process with this one now. We want steam to be coming out of here for 10 minutes. This one it is, it has been. So then this is the next piece to the puzzle. This is the pressure regulator. So we're going to place this on the vent pipe. Okay, now we see no pressure in the gauge. 
whoop, 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 things are gonna start to happen here. Okay. And then this little knob in the back, and I don't remember its name, they said when that pops up, there's pressure in the canner. I'm also gonna turn my heat up. It said to turn the heat up a little higher, so it's on its highest setting. We want this to be on, I believe it's about 11 pounds of pressure. I'll double check that though. And then I have to work with the heat. If it gets too high, turn the heat down. We'll, we'll read a book, we'll get it. And once this reaches the right pressure, then we start the clock for 90 minutes. So yes, I checked. It's 11 pounds of pressure that we want for 90 minutes. And our pressure gauge, it's going up. Okay, looks like we're about two and a half pounds of pressure now. So we are almost there. Look at that, we're like one little percent off. Okay, so there's the start of our 90 minutes. I'm going to turn my heat down one notch. See if that kind of keeps us in range there. Okay, I had to go down another notch because we got up to about 12 and a half pounds of pressure there, but I think we're maintaining on 11, so that's good. And then this one, it has been it's doing its venting. It's got about five minutes left of that. This is the little uh, little thing of a bob. There you go. <laughs> the little gauge that, whenever it is full of pressure, this will be sticking straight up, like the one. If you can see it with my backsplash, the one back there. Be able to see it better on this one. So we'll let it keep doing its business here for a little longer, and then put the little pressure dial on here and. Just do it like we know how to do it, yay. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this one down just a bit since I've worked with my other one. There we go, now we'll be rocking and rolling. There's the little piece up, so per the directions, never, ever, ever, even once they've cooled or you think they've come down out of pressure, just like with the Instant Pot, you wait till that drops. Okay, it is late now, filling up that pot to soak. I had about, it's probably about four to five pounds of ground beef that we've got both pressure canners going. 14 one quart jars total. All of the meat fit in there except for this last little bunch. Using these pressure canners is just gonna be like similar to using other electric pressure canner devices like the Instant Pot. You still have to have um, a period of time where the pressure releases. It's gonna take a bit. These have about 15 minutes left on them, and then it's gonna be however long until they naturally release. I'm gonna guess probably an hour or so. So honestly, once these are done and once I turn the heat off, I'm going to bed because they're gonna sit there and release their pressure. And then in the morning, I'll pull them out or I might wake up at some point in the middle of the night here pull them out and then put them on the counter. They're supposed to sit for 12 hours or so after until you check the lids and you mark them. So I think they're gonna be fine sitting in the canner with no heat and pressure released while mama gets some sleep, okay? Okay, anyway, um, but I put what was left of this pre-cooked brown ground beef. I dated it for 20, put pre-cooked ground beef. I will throw it in my freezer and then this will be just fine for sloppy joes or spaghetti or chili or whatever I need four to five pounds of already cooked ground beef for. We'll have some in the freezer. Okay, so morning confessions. I've been working on taking the different cans out. Again, now it says in the pressure canner book, if you're concerned about your pressure or yada, 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 you could just leave everything in there until it's 100% cool, which again is a several hour process. So I took that to mean uh, I slept and now I'm up and I'm unloading these cans. But look, my first canning accident, it must have gotten too hot. You all tell me what you think it is. I'm pretty sure it got too hot maybe on this side. Look, I had a jar bust and all that meat. So that is the residue that's on these cans. So I'm wiping them off with vinegar right now. All you canning expert mamas, just, I don't know. Let me know. What are your thoughts? But wiping these off now. Show you, I'm taking them over here. And then I'm just doing, uh, these are already wiped off, just doing some water and vinegar, wiping off these on the outside. It's been a few hours now. Here is how the jars are looking already in all the pictures of folks canned jars. I see everything rising to the top, so we must be good. So far, 
all my jars seem like they're sealed, but again, I've got got other projects going on today. So these are just gonna sit here all day. And from what I have quickly read, uh, the jars that canned in the canner where I had the can explode. How many times can I say can? Um, these seem to be fine. They should have processed just fine. I've read some stories today of experienced canners who once in a while have a jar broke unbeknownst to them and everything else still sealed and continued on just fine. So I'm going by that. We should be good here. I will tell you, this is, uh, I just want to can all the things now. I'm thinking through, oh my goodness, what else can I can? I obviously did not use all the jars that I sterilized yesterday. So with the meat I put in the freezer, I'm pretty sure that was about five pounds. This is eyeballing it. So I roughly canned 25 pounds of meat in 14 jars. Doing a little bit of math there, it brings it to about one and three quarter pound per jar of meat. So just under two pounds of meat per quart jar, best I can figure. But of course I lost one jar and some good meat there. And I'm thinking, I know I have potatoes. I know I have some other meat. What else, what else? Cause again, I'm, I'm practicing. I'm practicing for all this good canning in my future. First off, what I should show you guys is some of what I've read to test the seal is I should be able to pick up the lid like that, like so. These lids come off. You only use these during the canning process. So. Yay for learning stuff. Today I've instituted a pajama day, so I will not be showing my face. <laughs> Kids are not having a pajama day, but mama is. Just got to be a late morning and I thought, you know what? This is as far as I'm going. I'm still working and getting things done, but not leaving the pajamas. So here we are, we did it. We canned 25 pounds of ground beef minus about two pounds there, so probably 23 pounds, plus got five more pounds in the freezer. We did it and our jars are sealed. Yay! For the next project, now we've got baby Foxy on the floor. I'm gonna do my dishes and then I'm gonna wash these potatoes. I got probably 10 pounds of red potatoes, 20 pounds of white potatoes. You know I have a lot of potatoes planted. I need to learn this skill. So I figured out what I'm gonna do with all those jars there. I'm going to do some potato canning. Be on the lookout for a canning potatoes video. And then you know I was already thinking, carrots. All the things, let's can them. So again, click the first link down in the description below and I'm going to give you more information than you ever wanted on canning ground beef and just some extra help and tips on getting started canning in general. Yay!